Okay, let's take a look at this problem now, which continues on in our look at real options. We're still concerned with investment timing, but this is problem 13-7, and it involves valuing the options. Let me change that title there to say valuing the option. Okay, and it asks us to redo problem 13-2 using the Black-Scholes model to estimate the value of the option. It tells us the risk-free rate is 6% and that we are to assume that the variance of the, the, variance of the project's rate of return is 1.11%. Okay, well the first thing I want to calculate is P, which is the current value of the project. And we will do this from the perspective of it being year two. So let's take a look at what we're going to do is we're going to say that P is equal to the present value of the expected cash flows if delayed, right? So if we use that, what we need to do is calculate the NPV. I'm going to do it right here, and then I'm going to slide back up so that we can use the cash flows that we've seen before. Okay, we need to, the rate was given on our earlier problem, and you'll see that I actually have the earlier problem above here. So um, this is from the last demonstration, which was problem 13-2. Let me slide all the way up and you'll see it. See, here's 13-2, the problem, then a layout of the cash flows, and then we solved it. We solved part A here. And we solve part B here. Okay, so let's solve for P, the current value of the project. And to do that, we first have to determine the net present value of the cash flows. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say what are the cash flows associated with the option to proceed with this two years into the future. So we'll use the NPV formula again. And I'm going to slide up. We'll use the 10% from before. And now for the, the cash flow ranges, let me hit the F2 so you can see this. Um, here, let's start this again. Equal NPV. Hit the left paren, and I can hit the formula bar. And now we get the function arguments. The rate is 10%. And then the values, I'm going to slide up. And I'm going to show you that I took the, the, the cash outflow at the... Um, at the beginning or the end of period two out so that we will just discount the positive values that we're looking at in the future. And we're going to look at for all six periods. So we have two years where nothing happens and then the cash flow begins. That gives us our net present value, which tells us the current value of the positive cash flows from the option. I slide down, I get 11. It's 11 million for the 90% option. For the 10% option, I get 5.76. Then I need to determine the present value of the expected cash flows if it's delayed. And we take the 11 million times the 90% option, and we add to it the 5.76 present value of the expected cash flows times the 10% probability that that will occur. Now we've accounted for 100%. We can hit enter. And there's the formula again. You can see it up here. And what we what we come up with is P, the Black-Scholes model, where we need P, the current value of the project, to sell for it, is equal to 10.48, or 10.48 million. Okay, now let's drop in the other variables that we know. Um, we know that X stands for the cost to implement the project, and that is equal to 9 million, right? And we know that T, the time in years until the option expires, is two years. Beginning now, the option comes up in two years. I believe in the problem, they tell us right here, the risk-free rate of return is 6%. So I'm going to go I of RF, and really these should be small. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do this, but I'll try very quickly. That'd be a subscript. Okay, it worked. Um, but then I think if I add an equals in there, it still looks small. 
So why don't I do it this way instead? Say i of rf is going to be equal to 6%. And I'll drop the other variables just in here. Okay. Um, and I think that'll, I think we'll be able to follow that without a problem. Okay. And then they also tell us that we are to assume the variance of the project's rate of return, and that's just to simplify this problem, is equal to um, 0 0.0111, so 1.11%. 1 okay, and uh, rather than me messing with the sigma squared sim uh, symbol, I'm going to just call this sigma squared, and we'll square the two, okay? So I don't want to spend the time trying to drop in the Greek uh, symbol here. Format that. Make that a superscript. And so the variance of the project is equal to um, 0 0.0111. Okay, or 1.11%. Maybe percent would be better to use. Okay, now next we need to solve for d sub 1. This is right here, d sub 1. And we have this very long formula that you know from the Black-Scholes model. Now, to save time, I've worked it ahead, but let me show you how we, uh, how we get that. I'll hit the F2 and we can see. Okay, so on the numerator, we take the natural log of what's in cell H53. Um, so we take the natural log of the expected cash flows if we delay the 10.48 and we divide it by uh, 9. Oh, and I see that really if I'm going to do this consistently, this should come from cell B54. So I'll change that with B54. Let me hit enter just to make sure I didn't goof it up and I didn't. And then also in the numerator, besides taking, taking the natural log of uh, that first term, we need to take the interest-free rate of return, the interest, the risk-free rate, I mean, 6%, and then add to it um, uh, the variance of the project's rate of return divided, uh, divided by 2, okay, and multiply that times the time in years until the option expires. Once we have that, we divide it by, right above my mouse here, we divide it by the uh, variance of the project's rate of return, um, which is multiplied by the time in years, and both of those are taken to the uh, uh, to, to a power of one half. Okay, and and you pr and from your algebra, you remember that the easiest way or one way to break that down would be to simply take take it to the power of one half and multiply it. Um, so we take the value in B57, the 1.11%, raised to the power of uh, 1 half, and then we multiply it times the value of B55, which was T, the time in years, also raised to the power of 1 half. And when we do that, we come up with the value of D1 would be equal to 1.900 millions of dollars. Next, we need to figure out what D2 is. Okay, now I've worked that ahead as well, and let me hit the F2 so you can see how I got it. D2, as you can see up here, we take the value of D1, so we start with the value in what in was in cell B58, and then we subtract from it um, the standard deviation of the project's rate of return. So we take the variance, and we raise it to a power of one-half, right? And then we multiply that times the time horizon, the time in years until the option expires, we have that in cell B55, and that also is raised to a power of one half. When we do that, we come up with the value of D2 as being 1.75 millions of dollars. Okay, next we need to determine the, um, the uh, normal cumulative distribution and we find for, for D1 and D2. And I did this using Excel. Okay, and let me call up what the function. It's called the norm s dist function. It returns the standard normal cumulative distribution from the value you provide. And we need to find the value for 
um, B58, the D1 value that we already calculated, it comes out to be 0.9713. Then we do, the, then we can simply copy that down, and we get 0.96. Um, we find the normal cumulative distribution for D2. We get 0 0.9602. Okay. Now we have one more last step to term to determine the value of the option. Okay, and then the last thing we need to calculate is what we were after after, which is the value of the op the value of the option. And we use this very complicated formula you see here. Uh, I've worked it ahead of time, so let me show you what I've done here. I've taken the value in H cell H53, which is our present value of the expected cash flows, the 10.48 million, and then we multiply it times um, uh, the cumulative distribution for D1, the 0.9713 minus X, which stands for the cost to implement the project, 9 million, that's given by cell B54, times the mathematical constant E. And you can get the mathematical constant E by using the Excel formula EXP. So if we take EXP for a value of 1, you come up with E. And that's our EXP, left paren, 1, close paren. And then we need to take that to the power of the risk-free rate, which is given in cell B56, which is 6%, multiplied by the value T, which is uh, the time horizon, which is given um, in 2. Time horizon or time in years until the option expires. And then once we have all of that, we need to multiply it times the cumulative uh, distribution for D2. And that's given in cell um, B61 right there. And when we enter all of that, you should come up with an answer of 2.51. If you rounded it and used a different technique, you may come up with 2.514 as opposed to what I've gotten, which is 2.515, which is the value of the option. It's a complicated formula, but if we go step by step, we can solve for it.